Hello and welcome back to the wiring series on the Land Rover. So today we're going to be looking at the charging system. Just uh, kind of looking at the dynamo or generator, whatever you want to call it, or and the regulator and kind of just seeing how it all works. And I had a, I found out that I have a, a generator, a regu a generator or a dynamo from a 50s car or a tractor or something like that was on here and I'm just gonna reuse it I'm no reason to replace it because it already worked but had to do a little work with the brackets and everything but it'll work no problem so anyways big thank you to you guys for liking and subscribing and following your positive words always saying something great thank you for very much so let's get into taking a look at the electrical system So let's look at the charging system. We got a, a generator or a dynamo, whatever you want to call it, and a regulator mounted over here. So we got new wires coming down and around the engine compartment and down to here. So what we have is our D connection and our F connection. D is dynamo or generator or whatever. This is the big wire. It usually has a bigger bolt as well. That has the, the heavier wire that comes down from your regulator. Then your field, which is actually your smaller wire, comes up from your regulator as well. So in the diagram, I have them green and yellow, but originally in Land Rover, this would have been the the dynamo would have been yellow and the field would have been green. So I ordered a, the wrong color or whatever, thinking something else. So this is how I did it. I had the green coming over, but it should probably be switched would be more accurate. So these are your two here. And this is this is your high power side. This is your low power side. So you can kind of see how this has a smaller one and that has a bigger bolt to it. So that's how you can kind of get them straighter or whatever. But I put a little marker on there, paint pen, so I don't forget which one's which. And also this one has a ground to it. So I put a brown ground coming over to the generator. So, you may be looking at this and thinking, wait, this doesn't look like a Lucas generator here. And after much research and searching online, it is not a Lucas generator. It's actually, a, and after also, after taking it off and cleaning a wire wheeling, it, I actually got a, a, a name on it. It was Delco Remy. And after measuring it and looking it up and everything, it ends up it's a 9005 Delco Remy uh, generator. So this isn't going to look like your Lucas one, and it's not going to mount the same as well. So what? What? Let's talk about the mounting of it. So it's actually this generator, which is actually it's from like the 50s or it could be from a tractor or from a 50s car or something, but this was on the engine when I got it. So I'm just gonna reuse it because it actually works and everything. So I'm not gonna go buy, spend money on a new dynamo or generator if this one's already working. So I just cleaned it up and I'm gonna use it to run everything. So get back to the, what you need to do if you find yourself in some type of situation where you end up having not having a correct generator. So let's get back. Now this is here, this is actually about 43 millimeters to one and five eighths inch longer than a Lucas one. A Lucas one's about this long and this one's a lot longer, which was another thing that threw it off or whatever. It had uh, the original mounting bracket on it, it was broken and the bracket underneath it was broken and this slider back and forth this was broken on the end so i had to fix each one of these so i have this mounted here and i had to weld on oops another piece on the end of here because this was actually all broken off and cleaned it up so i have full uh a stronger bracket right here then the bracket down underneath I had to weld on, which is actually for the bolt hole here, had to weld that on too. I'll put a picture of that bracket on the screen right now. And so that bracket had to be welded and fixed, which was the original bracket down here. This is original bracket as well, but it's just flipped over in a different way. So in the back, to get to the engine itself, let me get my little diagram here. 
So like I mentioned, the original brackets here and the adjuster one sitting up here. So I actually had to make a spacer back through here. This is the case for the engine block where the original would have mounted onto. But I, what I did is I made a spacer here for a, a quarter inch bolt. I think I made it about half inch in diameter. And I made it about 43 millimeter or a le little less than one and five eighths. It, it came down to, to have a spacer in there. So I got a... A grade aid quarter inch bolt fine thread pitching it here holding it along with here i put um let's see i put the, the bolt that actually came with this and then i used the bolt there was another bolt on the other end it's just like this that threads into it so i used that as well so to get this thing mounted was a bit of a pain in the butt and it was actually resting on the frame whenever i got it so now it's steady it's in there and it's solid it's not going anywhere now. So, so if you come up against something like this in yourself, then I say don't replace it. Fix what you got. Try to keep and see what you have that's going because these th these suckers are expensive. They are about like $400, $500 for one of these things. And if you go to a generator one, or I mean an alternator one that looks like this, it's the same price. It don't matter. So... In my haste of wanting to move along with the engine, I didn't film putting this all back together. So sorry, guys. So let's move on. So we got this all mounted bracket. We got our belts here. It's nice and tight and straight. Actually, that was another thing, too. When you put this in, make sure this is straight, your belt to your water pump and your crank down there. So everything is pretty much straight. So, all right. So let's get back to the wiring. So this comes up to here. It goes around the engine compartment. Let's move over to the regulator. All right, we're at the regulator over here. And on the front of it here, it has, it's actually flipped up upside down for it to work. So it'll be a D, an F, and a B. So down here, let me move the light. There you go. So the B goes over here. You need a heavy wire. I think I'm using a 12 gauge or 10 gauge wire will work. But you have the, the B, this comes right over to the battery. Comes right over and it's bolted, it goes right directly to the connector here so it can charge the battery. The field is F, is the green, the yellow wire. The yellow wire comes down over, goes over to the field. Oh wait, no. Yeah, this goes over to the field of the generator. And this is the green one. This is where the power is coming in, D, dynamo. So this goes over to the, to the dynamo right here. It's another, it's another thick wire. It should be a 10 gauge or 12 gauge wire, these two, because these are the two high power ones, the one that go to the battery and the one goes from the dynamo. These are the two big power ones. And this one here, the yellow one with the, the black marker on it, this comes over from the fuse box. So when I turn the key on and uh, the ignition turns on this side of the fuse box, it puts power over to the generator, over to the field part, which is actually the dynamo part, and it's somehow connected to the field part inside, internally. So when I click that on, it puts power to this, it puts power to everything, and then it starts working. Final part is you need to ground this actual box here. You have, Factory wise, it has a ground tab here. All I did was bring a brown wire right down to our ground block, which a ground block goes right over to the battery. So there's not much to the wiring of this. So this is the, the final part to get the engine started for it to run and charge and charge up the battery and everything. So, so over here, we have this, the key, we turn it on and here comes our generator light right here. So it turns on. So we're not going to start it up right now. We're going to be starting it up later, but you can see the generator light turns on, oil lights on. Now the glow plug light just went out from the other video. So, so the electrical system is now hooked up for charging itself. So this is the end of the charging video. There's not much to the charging system. It's pretty simple. It's, you know, kind of plug and play type things or whatever, but, uh, so this is pretty much the last thing to actually start the engine and everything. So electro electrically wise, at least. And then the next thing is going to be a lot of mechanical things. But next video is going to be the kind of conclusion or whatever of the video. So 
of the series of the wiring to actually get the car started and get it going, get all the main wiring done. So other things like, you know, like uh, four ways or horn and everything like that, that's going to be in another video. So thank you very much for liking and subscribing and following the videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one and stay awesome. Bye-bye.